Freulicke Weihnachten, Maguire. I beg your pardon. I said Freulicke Weihnachten. What is that? That is German for Merry Christmas. Oh. Do you know why I'm saying it in German? Having the foggiest. Because our friend Leonie from the German Sisters, uh, she is making vegan cookies for Christmas on her channel, and she asked if we would make a vegan recipe to go along with that. Oh, uh, that's vegans! Yeah, we, yes indeed. So, we are going to make something that goes really well with cookies, and that is hot chocolate with whipped cream. Hot chocolate mm -hmm. with whipped cream? Cream. Exactly, exactly. So really this is two recipes. Two recipes. Which means six ingredients. Cheating! Nope, it's only three ingredients a piece. Cheating! Does that mean you don't want any hot chocolate? I didn't say that! Alright then! I just said cheating! Alright, so let's get on with the re uh, ingredients for our two recipes. Three ingredients each. Six ingredients total. The first ingredient for hot chocolate is, of course, chocolate! Chocolate! We are using this Taza or Taza chocolate. This is a local company to us. We are from Boston. Um, and this... Right by the Harvard Yard. Exactly. And this is a company in Somerville, Massachusetts, which is right nearby. Um, they Closer are... Closer to Boston than us, but yeah, who's well... counting? I like to say that we're in Boston because it makes us seem like we're cosmopolitan. We're worldly! Exactly. So, uh, this is a uh, local Massachusetts company. They make wonderful Mexican style chocolate. Uh, their ingredients. They're hockey pucks. They look like little hockey pucks, yeah. Their ingredients are sourced uh, well, and uh, these ones are vegan. Um, vegan. And they also come in a bunch of different flavors. So we're just going to use the regular dark chocolate. You can play poker chips, too. You could. Um, we're or just maybe going more to... like, uh, but what's, what the, what's, what they play on ships? The, uh, the, you, you... Shuffleboard. Shuffleboard! Yes, you could do all of that, but we're going to cook, and we've got five more ingredients to get through. Okay. All right. So uh, this one is dark chocolate, which we're going to use. You can also get them in different flavors like cinnamon. This one has chili in it. There's one that has eggnog flavor in it. There are a whole bunch of really great which ones. Which one will we use? We're just going to use the regular dark chocolate. Uh, we're going to uh, use one hockey puck or one shuffleboard puck. Uh, and that is 1.35 ounces or about 40 grams of chocolate. You can use any type of vegan chocolate you want. Hmm. The next ingredient for our hot chocolate is... Well, this one should be a breeze. Oh, look at you being all clever. I read the label. Oh, smart donkey. <laughs> okay, um, this is almond milk. You can use uh, regular, you could even use vanilla. Vanilla would be fine. We're using the low sugar version, but there you can also have a sweet... No. Yep. Sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, this hot chocolate is not very sweet because the whipped cream we're putting on top of it is very sweet. So we're just going to use the low sugar uh, almond milk. I'm using about one and a half cups. I just basically filled up my mug and put that in the pan. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. It's all right. Our final ingredient is almond extract. Looks like one of those little tiny liquor bottles, actually. Uh, well, actually, extract is made with alcohol. Ooh. Ooh. But don't drink it. It's not. First of all, it's not tasty. Secondly, you're. I don't even know if you're old enough to drink. We'll discuss that later. Okay. Um, you're just going to use a very small amount here. Any extract is going to have a lot of flavor. We're using almond because we're using almond milk, and almond and chocolate go very well together, as do almond and peppermint. So use about uh, an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe a quarter teaspoon, but no more than that. And don't drink the rest, folks. Don't drink the rest. Moving on to the whipped cream, we are going to use... Coconut milk. Coconut milk. We're going to use one 13.66 ounce can of coconut milk. They're usually pretty standard. Uh, this... Why are we using a can? Why don't we just get a coconut? Well, because coconut milk is actually coconut water that's mixed with some of the solids from pulverized coconut. So there is no real milk that comes out of coconut. Oh, you learn something new every day. Yep. And what we're looking for is the fat from that. So this does take some preparation. You're going to have to put your coconut milk in the fridge overnight or for a day before before, um, because we're going to want the solids from this to separate from the liquids in this, and then we're just going to use the solids. Solids to solidify, mm -hmm. One and the liquids to be poured off. One can of unsweetened coconut milk. Everything's unsweetened. You mentioned that everything was unsweetened. We're going to sweeten that up with... Salad dressing! Nope. Ketchup? Nope. 
then you got me. This is agave nectar or agave syrup. This is... Oh, the sweet stuff. The sweet stuff. This is... Glug, glug, glug. Uh, I wouldn't drink this either. You don't want to drink anything. I can't drink anything. Uh, you can drink the hot chocolate when it's done. Ooh. Yep. Um, we're going to use about two tablespoons of this, but this is definitely to taste. I like things a little bit more sweet. Um, we're using this instead of sugar because the uh, coconut cream is very, very fatty. And if you put in granulated sugar, it would just stay crunchy. It really wouldn't melt into crunch, there. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Exactly. So about two uh, tablespoons of agave nectar. And finally, for our peppermint whipped cream, we're going to use some peppermint extract. Another liquor, 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 liquor bottle. Have you been drinking them? That's not in your business. Okay, well don't drink these. This is, again, a very powerful extract. You're only going to want to use uh, about an eighth of a teaspoon, if that, in there. So just a little tiny drop in there will... Uh, cover it just fine. Uh, you can definitely smell the peppermint while you're whipping this up, so... Do you smell it already? Yes. Perfect. So we're going to add that into our peppermint whipped cream, so why don't we see how it all comes together? Okay! So the first thing we're going to do is add the almond milk to a pan. I've measured this out using the mug that I'm going to serve it in. That way I've got enough. Um, it's about a cup and a half. Um, if you want a deeper chocolate flavor, you can cut that down to a cup. I find that that can be a little bit overpowering, especially with dark chocolate, so I'm going to use a cup and a half, which also fits my mug. Now the thing we're going to want to do is let this cook until it comes to a boil. Um, the, one of the nice things about using almond milk or soy milk or coconut milk is you don't really have to worry about it scalding in the way that regular milk will. So we are going to let this come up to a boil, and then we will add the chocolate. Okay, our almond milk has just come to the boil. You really do have to watch this because it can boil over very quickly. In fact, we've taken it off the heat and it's still boiling a little bit. That is fine because we want it nice and hot when we add the chocolate. I've gotten some all over the stove top. What I'm going to do now is just mix this chocolate, which I have cut up into very fine pieces. You can also grate it if you want to, that's fine. What you want is to make sure that the chocolate is nice and small so that it dissolves easily within your almond milk. Now you want to do this off of the heat because otherwise the chocolate can fall to the bottom of the pot and then scald and you don't want that at all. Also, I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of my almond extract. Now you can add whatever extracts you like. Uh, vanilla is very common for hot chocolate. You could also use a coffee extract. If you wanted this whole dish to be very peppermint, then you could add a peppermint extract to this as well. Uh, if you are doing this as a Mexican hot chocolate, you may want to add cinnamon or even a little bit of salt to this as well. I now have all of the chocolate in my almond milk and that is all dissolved. I also have added my almond extract, so this is a nice almondy, chocolatey drink. I am going to simmer this on medium-low heat for another couple of minutes just so that all the flavors meld together and then I can pour it into my mug and serve it with my peppermint whipped cream, which we will make next. Alright, so next we're going to work on our vegan whipped cream, our vegan peppermint whipped cream. Uh, I have put this can of unsweetened coconut milk in the fridge overnight. Uh, you need to do this because what you want is for the fats to all solidify. And then you're also going to want to poke a little hole in your fat right there. See how there's liquid? This is actually coconut water. Uh, that and some of the fat pulp from uh, coconut becomes coconut milk, what we call coconut milk. So you're going to want to basically cut a little hole with a fork right in there and then get rid of the water. Now you'll want to save this because it's really good for other recipes. So it's uh, you can put it in a smoothie or uh, you can use it for um, some Thai cooking and all sorts of things. So you'll want to drain this off. I'm doing this into a small container with a lid that I can just put right back in the fridge. 
I have a glass bowl and some beaters that I have put into the freezer for about 15 minutes. They are nice and cold now. Basically, you want very cold utensils and a very cold vessel because the coconut solids, they don't stay solid for very long at room temperature. You don't want any of this to be at room temperature. So now I'm going to take all of the fat that you have in your can of coconut. Again, there's a little bit of liquid at the bottom. We're going to try our best to get all the solids without getting the liquid because that won't whip up nicely. That's pretty good. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but remember, as with whipped cream, this is going to increase in volume as you add air. So now I'm just going to start whipping it like I would regular whipped cream. Okay, I have whipped this up. It's already increased in volume by quite a bit, as you can see. So now I am going to add my agave nectar. This is a sweetener that I'm going to use instead of uh, sugar because sugar this is a much fattier substance there we go then you would get with milk milk is a much more liquidy uh, milk has a lot more liquid to this than uh, this fat from the coconut so I'm going to use something that is a syrup or a liquid more than a um, than something that's granular because it may become crunchy otherwise now I'm also going to add in about an eighth of a teaspoon of peppermint extract. You don't want too much of this. If you haven't worked with peppermint extract before, this is really, really powerful stuff. You don't need too much to add a lot of peppermint flavor. So you can always add more, it's hard to take out. Now I'm going to continue whipping this for another minute or so until it's all light and fluffy and, and incorporated. All right, so this has basically tripled in size from the small amount we got from the can. It's very nice and light and fluffy, just like you would like for any sort of whipped cream, any sort of whipped topping. This will keep in your fridge for a good week. Um, because it's not milk, it will keep a little bit longer, but you don't want to keep it longer than that. We're going to put this on top of our nice mug of hot chocolate and see how McGuire likes his vegan Christmas hot chocolate. What do you think, Maguire? Hot chocolate and vegany. It is actually. It's veganese. Vegan. Vegan's fine. Vegan like. Um, one thing that I will mention is that because this is a pure fat whipped topping, as you can see, it's already melting directly in there. That's a good thing for me because it adds a nice peppermint flavor to the hot chocolate and it sweetens. Flavor. Right, and it sweetens everything up really well. This is really delicious. I bet if you uh, gave this to uh, five or six people, most of them wouldn't even know that this was vegan. It's really, really delicious. Is this Nickdine vegan hot chocolate? Let's ask Leonie if she actually used some good German. I don't know. I don't know. We'll ask her. Try some more. <gasps> oh, oh, did you get tired from the hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. Uh, warm drinks always put me to sleep. Oh, well, this is perfect for a Christmas evening. You could have some vegan Christmas cookies that Leonie made and then drink some vegan hot chocolate with some peppermint whipped cream. And then you can go to bed and dream about Santa coming. All right, well, McGuire is out for the count, so uh, I'm gonna close this up now. Uh, if you would like, you can subscribe to get more three ingredient recipes. We're here every Thursday. Uh, if you'd like to, if you'd like to see Leone's take on a Christmas vegan dish, the link is down below, and I will put it at the end of this video as well. And if you would like to see any other recipes, please leave a comment down below and let us know what kind of recipes you'd like to see us, uh, like us, to uh, try to make with three ingredients. You screwed up there. I did screw up there, but we're not going to retake it. Thanks very much for joining us this time. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Moving on to the whipped cream, we are going to use a can, a tie can. Rupert already made that joke. 
Okay, fine. <laughs> so I'm not original! Alright then. One more time. <clears throat>